91. To her sister in Geras. Don Leonardo Zabala always took a great interest in the Institute, and especially in the house at Bilbao, where he was confessor to the community for a long time. He was a native of that town and curate in the parish of St. Nicholas. He was a zealous, devout priest and alms giver, who took part in all the good works which were carried out in the capital. Well to do people often gave him substantial sums for these purposes. When Mother Foundress was looking for a new house for the community, he came to their aid. The baptism to which Mother Foundress refers, and which kept Mother Pillar in Jerez, was that of a Protestant teacher, an English lady, not Swedish, as Mother says in other letters. The sisters had instructed her so that she could enter the church. She lived, at this time, in the retreat house at Jerez. Bilbao. Between the 26th of August and the 1st of September, 1887. My dear sister, as you could not come here on account of the Swedish lady's baptism, I have come myself. Maria del Salvador was worried, and we urgently needed to see and decide about these houses which we have been offered. I am very glad I came for more reasons than one. How badly off they are in this house, and in this locality. But I hope that the Lord will get them out of here in the end, so we have to work for it. I am not surprised that there are no vocations, there are none at all just now and the Jesuit fathers are quite cool towards us, and will be until things change here. As you know the house which Don Leonardo suggests they should rent, I won't give you a description of it. I have seen it, and it is even farther away than this one, opposite the palace of Zabalbiru. The rent is 14,000 reals. The kitchen garden is very large, beautiful, but the walls are low and the house is very small, only just enough to live in, with no room for an oratory or a school. Don Leonardo spoke of his plan to make a provisional, wooden chapel and a school in the same way. But that would cost at least 1,000 duros more, and the house is not ours. I don't think there will be any future in it for us. I did not see it until last night. Then I told him of these objections, and he thinks they are reasonable. Father Arastegui suggests another house next to Our Lady of Mercy, but that cannot be rented, it would have to be bought. Father is very eager for us to buy, but he would need an advance of 25,000 duros to settle the business. He is the only one who has any means of getting the people out. The site is beautiful, all on its own, beside the estuary. It is much more central than this one, just before you get to the Cal de San Francisco, near the estuary. Of course, it is the site which would be bought, because the house is in very bad condition. It is a large site with a garden. It could be lived in for a time, and there is room for a chapel and a school. According to Doña Vicenta and Doña Benita, if we go to Don Cirillo Astara, he will lend us as much as we need at a low interest. They want this to be kept secret. I have only come to get information and to have a look. Before anything is settled, I want you to come and see everything, because you know more about these things than I do. Today, I am going to consult someone to see if we are allowed to take the money offered us, because the constitutions strictly forbid borrowing, but I think that perhaps we can, if we are able to pay the interest and acquire the property with what we are paying for this house. Rent of this house could be used to pay the interest on the money we borrow to buy the other house. This is a dead place, no one comes near us except those I have mentioned the chaplain is very good to us. They say that Father Urbaru is not coming until the middle of September. Come after the baptism, if you like. Leave without saying where you are going, as if you were going to Madrid, but come here. You can see Father and settle this business at the same time, because I don't want to do it alone, and it cannot be left. I don't know even how I'm writing. Don't be annoyed because I have come here. It was necessary. I don't think our Lord can be pleased to see you cross so often. Your affectionate sister. Ninety-two. To her sister in Jeras. Bilbo. The fifth of September, eighteen eighty-seven. My dear sister. We are still not certain about the money, but there is hope that we shall be able to borrow it at three percent or four percent at most. There are two houses in view. One is very solid with large rooms, a garden and grounds, situated near the statue of the Sacred Heart. 
The other is behind this house, overlooking the main road, but its garden is smaller than the other one, and it is in bad condition. This is the one which the fathers want because it is not far from here and Father Rastegui is determined to do the business himself if we like. But he does not press it, he only offers. They are asking 37,000 duros for the first, payable over a long period, they say. For the other one, Father would require 15,000 in the first place, just to open the negotiations, for only he can do it. The house belongs to one of those queer old noblemen, who have to be understood, and who wants to keep his family house at all costs. But father says that since he needs money, as they so often do, his reverence thinks he will succeed in getting the house, if he can offer him a substantial sum. They want 25,000 duros. It would be foolish to rent the one D Inardo offers, first because it is very small, and there is no room for a chapel or a school, and secondly, it is also foolish to pay 14,000 reals in rent and go right to the other end of Bilba where we would be completely forgotten, having nothing for the public. House is very pretty and the garden is big, but there is no protection because the walls are very low. It is a healthy and restful place, but there is only room for the sisters. There is no hope of anyone helping us at all, over and above giving us this loan. We have a very good name here, but it is not enough to attract anyone of importance. Don Leonardo is anxious for you to come, because he is expecting the large sum of money you promised him, and he thinks you will do great things. As soon as they let us know if they will lend us the money, I'll send you a telegram so that you may decide what should be done. I would also like Purisma to come, but she has to sacrifice her desire this time, because that house cannot be left alone. The thing now is for you to come. The one who comes with you will have the postulant from here, but the coming is the problem. Perhaps some sisters of charity may be coming, if you don't mind traveling with them. Otherwise, come with the sister who can most easily be spared. If Maria Lena came her mother might pay her fare. I will ask her, and in the telegram I'll say whether she is to come or not. Father Urbaru is not coming now because he is rector of Valladolid. He hinted at a foundation there. I don't want one there or anywhere. Let Isabel begin to be Our Lady Sacristan on 8th, her birthday. In case I don't write, but I shall do so dv to those who are making the vase. Everyone is well here. An embrace for you all, and for you from your sister. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 93. To Mother Maria Joaquina. After her stay in Bilba regarding the business of the house, Mother Foundress went to Saragossa. The visit lasted from 12th till the 20th of September and is alluded to in this letter. Madrid, the 30th of September, 1887. My dear sister in Christ, I see by your letter that you enjoy my stay with you. I too enjoys it very much, but now it is our Lord will for me to be here, and I fulfill it, trying to become worthy of heaven where we shall be reunited. There is no other way there, but that of fulfilling the will of God made known to us by our superiors. I am very glad to hear the good news that you are working with the little ones, trying to be an apostle and a mother to them. Love this holy work very much, and let it have a great share in your communions and your prayers. Forget everything and everyone else, and yourself too so as to give yourself entirely to the fulfillment of this work with the greatest possible perfection. If you do this, forgetting everything and everyone out of love for the heart of Jesus, he will do more than you can to remedy the great needs which surround us on all sides. My dear sister, impress well on your heart this truth which Jesus teaches us. The saints teach us the same, and it is to their family that we belong, not to any other. For our own flesh and blood, as its very name tells us, is the same as saying the enemy of our good, because it robs us of the little bit of love we have in our poor hearts. I don't know if you will understand me, I am writing in a great hurry. Let me know. I embrace you in Jesus, your servant, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 94. To Mother Maria de la Consolación in Cares. Mother Maria de la Consolación Concepción Gómez Sabina sister of the widow of Senor Roll made her vase on the 16th of July 1887. On the 1st of June 1888 she was appointed assistant in the house of Jerez. 
In 1889, she was second mistress in Madrid, and in 1891, she was assistant in Cordova, acting as superior. Knowing she was ill, Mother Foundress took the opportunity of teaching her that great generosity in the service of God must be united with discretion. Madrid, October or November 1887. My dear sister Maria de la Consolacion, I have seen this illness coming on for some time, and I have said so before now when I noticed how little you were eating. You see, for goodness sake, do as you are told, and eat well, even if you have no appetite, and I assure you that within a fortnight you will be a different person. I see by this that the devil is causing some trouble in your house and in others. After working so hard with you all, these are the results. It is not only that superiors suffer at seeing their religious useless, but the comments people make reach us even here, and they put off vocations. When shall we impress upon you that it is not the body that God wants us to sacrifice, but the spirit, but with peace and joy? Spirit, my dear sister, ask the sacred heart of Jesus for it not a weak spirit, but strong and valiant. Then you will take as much notice of desires and wishes as we do of those of a donkey which is working for us. If it sleep and its daily rations, yes, but then, gee up, off you go. I was edified by what I heard the other day about a religious with a bad leg who has to go about in a wheelchair. She goes to school in the chair, in very great pain, with astonishing eagerness. And shall we who never change our ways have the same reward? O oh, divine heart, what little esteem we have for the labors you bore for our example. You bore our cross with the greatest joy, and we are exhausted with the weight of a little splinter of yours, O oh, dear Lord. Forgive me, my dear sister, but the effeminate spirit of these days exasperates me. I embrace you in the heart of Jesus. Yours in him. Mary of the Sacred Heart. Ninety-five. Not addressed to anyone in particular. About this time, the different superiors began to send M. General an account of the principal events which has happened in her house during satisfaction of the virtues which had been practiced in the Madrid house, and the blessings which God had poured out upon them during 1887. Madrid. The 18th of January, 1888. My dear mothers and sisters in Christ, I want to tell you something about the observance and virtues of these sisters. As obedience must be outstanding according to our rules, I shall begin with that. The sisters practice obedience not only in carrying out what they are ordered, but generally by surrendering their judgment. By their docile and childlike submission, they show that they see their superiors in the place of Christ our Lord. They love the common life, and they are sorry if they are unable to follow it. They also love poverty and faithfully observe it not only in their food, but in their rooms, and in all that they use. Because of our numbers, they have sometimes gone without mattresses and blankets. Many of them have slept on their bare beds, vying with each other in their holy desire to see who should give up her things. These actions are all the more meritorious, because no one notices them, and they are never talked about either in public or in private. They also have a great love of prayer. They have extra adorations both day and night, without being sorry for themselves. Rather, they are full of faith as they pray to the Lord for all necessities, and as these increase, they redouble their petitions with great confidence and hope in the Lord for everything. They do beautiful needlework, which they use as presents for people to whom the congregation is indebted, or for those in need. Odd's help is seen even in this, because, knowing our insufficiency as he does, he sees to it that these things please the people so much that they are full of gratitude and feel greatly obliged to us. The novitiate is excellent. The zealous mistress, who is all that I could desire, tries the novices and at the same time trains them in the spirit of the institute. They do all the experiments very strictly, not taking time for anything else, even on feast days. They see only with the eyes of their superiors and have unbounded love for the congregation. They feel the effects of poverty, just as the religious of Vaz do. On rainy nights, so much water comes into one of the dormitories that they have to leave their slippers on top of the night table to prevent them from getting wet, because otherwise they would be soaked. In the other dormitory, 
the rain is blown in through the windows, so that if they do not take the precaution of pulling the beds away from the walls, they have their faces and pillows splashed with water, yet they are always happy and contented. But our Lord is never outdone in generosity. He is so pleased with such faithful observance of the rules, love for and submission to their superiors and love for the common life, that he opens his most loving heart and fills us with graces. He gives us health and everything we need. We are always short of resources in this house, either because very little comes in or because of our heavy expenses. Nevertheless, he provides for us in such a visibly marvelous way that although we always have what we need, we are at the same time always in want. It seems as if he takes special joy in seeing us hope for everything from him alone. We have here a kind of sodality called the Adores of the Blessed Sacrament. It was begun by a good, modest little woman who was sorry to see our Lord so often alone. So she gathered her friends together to take turns at Adorateon. Seeing how they persevered, I had it organized, and the group was inaugurated on Maundy Thursday. They put on for the first time their scapulars of the Sacred Heart, which they wear during their time of washing. It is inspiring to see how faithful they are even when it rains or snows. Our own dear Bishop and the Nuncio of the Holy See give us proofs of their esteem. They visit us and are always very kind and affable at such times. We are honored in the same way by the Archbishops of Seville and Valladolid and the Bishops of Cadiz and the Canary Islands. They usually give us beautiful talks and they rarely visit the capital without coming to see us, giving us proofs of their affection for which we can never be sufficiently grateful. The fathers of the society love the Institute. They give us talks and hear our confessions when we need them, helping us to sanctity ourselves with their holy teaching. The building for the novitiate, which was begun on the 17th of May last year, is almost finished. It comprises dining room, kitchen, pantry and room for the Kojuter sisters on the ground floor. These are lovely rooms overlooking the gardens. On the first floor are two large rooms, each big enough for 20 novices, with a balcony along one side, and lovely views. There are 40 cubicles on the second floor, and finally, the attic which runs the whole length of the building, is very light and well ventilated. Among our benefactors, the first deserving mention is the father of one of the novices. He offered 7,500 pesetas for the painting of the church roof, and although the painter gave us a reduction, our benefactor handed over the whole sum he had promised. This same gentleman very kindly lent the money needed to complete the work on the novitiate. Another gentleman, an uncle of the same novice, gave us 3,000 pesetas to buy the magnificent harmonium which we have. The father of another novice gave 1,000 pesetas for curtains. The novices gave the lamps and fittings for the altar. A good lady gave 500 pesetas for the carpet for the sanctuary. The cost of exposition has been defrayed on several days, and besides we have been given 4,968.25 pesetas in alms. May our Lord repay all these people, and let us remember them in our prayers. I commend myself to the prayers of you all. Yours in Jesus. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Ninety-six. To her sister. This letter gives a glimpse of Mother Foundress' greatness of heart, considering the circumstances which preceded and which caused it. For some time, she had cherished the desire of opening a new house more centrally situated in Madrid. She had three reasons for this desire. To make the Institute more widely known. To increase the worship of the Blessed Sacrament, and to have room for retreats. On the 11th of January, 1888, she made her plan known to her consultors and told them the means she had at her disposal to accomplish it. All approved of the plan, except Mother Pillar, who was afraid it would cause serious damage to the Institute. Without giving up this idea, they decided, in the month of February, to make a foundation in Jijan, if they could obtain the necessary financial help without burdening the Institute. Mother Pillar set out with Carlota Spinola to study the position. The Jesuits of that town advised them instead to open a school in Corona where there was no girls' school. Neither Mother General or the other assistants raised any objection to this, although the conditions which they stipulated were not completely fulfilled. 
It could be hoped that once the school was opened it would soon have a life of its own, but in the meantime it had to be set up at the congregation's expense. Mother Foundress did not remind her sister of the warnings which had been expressed to her, but supported her undertaking with the interest and detachment revealed in these lines. Madrid, the 19th of June, 1888. My dear sister, I am answering you by return of post. I am sure some letters have been lost. Do everything you think necessary and advantageous for that foundation such as renting the house, etc. I told you I could send 3,000 duros, linen for the chapel, both white and colored, the silver ciborium, but nothing else. I can't send the monstrance, because it's black, and no house has a spare chalice. I am going to try to see if I find one in the pawn shop. As for the sisters, decide those you want, and when you ask for them they'll go. Let me know how much linen you need sheets, tablecloths, etc. Consulo is very ill with consumption. It seems she is not long to live. I am going to write to her mother. We are all up to our eyes in work. MGR Montana, whom I saw today, sends you his kind regards. An embrace from your sister. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 97. To Mother Maria del Salvador. At last, the repeated attempts to find a better house in Bilba had been successful, and at the beginning of 1888, the community moved to the Campo Valentin, to a property of Doña Dolores Enderica, which was rented to them for several years. There was a good garden in which they built a very devotional church, of rather flimsy construction, which many people visited. Mother Foundress wanted to be present at the inauguration, with Mother Purissima and Maria del Carmen, and to this end she gave up her idea of making her perpetual profession on the Feast of St. Ignatius. But at the last moment, she had to change her plan. Madrid, the 19th of July, 1888. My dear Mother Maria del Salvador, be glad when all these annoyances happen, they give salt to the church. You'll see how soon Father Gomez gets over this. Be prepared for much more still to come, but don't get upset, Bod permits it all. So don't get it into your head that it is all your fault. I am delighted that the church is good, and I am sure it is going to be the means of getting you the house. Don't lose your faith and joy, rather let them increase in you, and cast all the worries upon God. I am thinking of going there, although, really, I cannot get away. I'll set out next Monday or perhaps on Sunday, by the slow train. Expect me on either day, in case. Don't send an expensive carriage, but a cheap one, and that only because I don't know how to get to the house. Amelia, and Maria del Carmen will come with me. Try to get a preacher, and see if the inauguration can take place on the Feast of St. Ignatius. I am not going to make the profession that day. I want to please D. Leonardo. He deserves it. I hope the piano will be there soon, so that the practice can begin as soon as we arrive. See that Immaculata has some rest. Consulo is going to receive Viticum this afternoon. She has got up every day, even today. I think she is going to die on her feet. I'll see what I can do about getting a lamp. Yes, I received your letter for father, and I gave it to him, but he hasn't answered. You want crosses, well, accept them. Every suffering is a cross, and our Lord is hungry for this food. Yes, you can remind Father Alarcon and Paz about the invitation. Don't wait for me to come. I embrace you in Jesus. Mary of the Sacred Heart. Ninety-eight. To her sister. Don Juan comes Y Vidal, the former vicar general of Cordova, had later gone to Tarragona where he was a canon and archpriest. On the 30th of July, 1888, he wrote to Mother Foundress telling her that he had just had a visit from a Jesuit father who had asked him to find out if the mothers had any intention of opening a house of the institute in Girona. This father thought that once they were settled there I would be easy lure them to 20 Lo Barcelona. Two years before Mother had sorrowfully had to refuse an offer by the canon Reba's Y servant, for the same reason as hindered her now. But she was always greatly attracted by the city V of Barcelona. Madrid, the 5th of August, 1888. My dear sister, of course we were flattered by Don Juan Cum's suggestion. But what about the sisters? So, we think, and I'm sure you will agree, 
that we should not refuse him completely, but put him off with that excuse, and any others you may think suitable, and which will not displease him. Then, I think you should find out what they think of giving, or what kind of foundation they want. I would not like it to be a girl's school, because we haven't the people for that, and there are not many suitable ones for the future. We have enough to do to keep that house going. I am thinking of those sisters whom you want, and I'll see who are the best ones. Alina is well-mannered, and there is Gabriella or Cecilia. Which do you prefer, among the Cogitor sisters, perhaps Asuncion and Francisca de Paula? But they would be left badly off in Andalusia. Ingratia has vomited blood twice, quite a lot, but they say she is all right. They have sent her some Panticosa water, and for presentation too, she is the worse of the two. The Kayla is very well, she was anointed this winter. I don't know if I told you that Maria del Carmen is in Bilbao with Isidra for the inauguration. The latter went so that she could play, and to please Don Leonardo who wanted me to go, but this was not possible, because the bishop still has not said a word. She is coming back on Wednesday, with the Ares girl, if the devil does not put his foot in it, and with two cogitor postulants. If Antonita could meet them somewhere this would be a good occasion for her to come. If she is 28 years old, I have no objection to her coming without saying anything to her family. I nearly forgot about Manresa, it seems risky to me as we have no house in Rome. Send the address of this person, and the crucifix, heart, and everything will be sent. If possible, send it by 9th or 10th, if not, when you come here will do, we'll arrange that for the vase of Sicily and Transfiguration. We'll have the crest made. Look at these models, and the old one, and see which you prefer. Have you a bell for calling there? I thought of taking one from here, but I forgot it. They are getting on well in Bilbao. An embrace for all, and to you from your sister, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Ninety-nine. To the Reverence Father Enrique Perez, Augustinian Recollect. Father Manuel Martinez, who had worked with such great interest in Rome in the affairs of the Institute, died on the 22nd of July, 1888. He was succeeded in the charge of procurator of his order by Father Enrique Perez, who did even more for the congregation, if that were possible, by the unconditional support he was always ready to give. Madrid. The 5th of October, 1888. Very Reverence Enrique Perez of the Holy Family, Procurator General. Esteemed and dear Father in Christ, I received your letter and the rescript granting us permission for twelve more nights' exposition. Our constitutions prescribe exposition of the Blessed Sacrament each week during the night on Thursdays and on the eve of the principal feasts. May the Sacred Heart, who sees my gratitude, reward your reverence in the measure of his own riches and liberality. We shall repay you with our prayers and gratitude. That is all we have. We applied for favors similar to those enjoyed by the Blessed Sacrament nuns, but were refused. However, we were granted four plenary indulgences each week. But now that your reverence has such a good intercessor there, perhaps you may succeed in getting us the favor that a plenary indulgence may be gained every day by visiting our chapels where the Blessed Sacrament is exposed, just as for the forty hours. This is what we would like to have for all our houses, but especially the one in Bilbao. Although it may take a long time to obtain, I do not give up hope. Your reverence is to blame for helping us so well. But you do not lose by it, because Jesus will repay everything. The poor blessed sacrament nuns, and still poorer, infinitely more to be pitied, are those who insult religion in this way. May the Lord have mercy on them. I don't know if I told your reverence that we are opening another house more or less in the center of Madrid. This gives me great consolation. If only we could open a house of reparation in every street. Evil increases every day here, and there is a great need for people who will console the Sacred Heart. Pardon me, Your Reverence, for asking you one more favor. We would be so grateful if you could obtain permission for us to have midnight mass in our chapel in the house in the Cal Ancha de San Bernardo No. 19 that is our address and permission for the sisters and all the faithful who assist at it to receive Holy Communion. We already have permission from the bishop here for the foundation asterisk I have already mentioned, and the inauguration will take place within a few days. 
pray, your reverence, for an increase of glory for the heart of Jesus, and for many souls to serve him. I ask you again to pardon us, and I assure you once more that we all pray for your reverence and for all those you hold dear. Mother Purissima is in retreat. She would surely be pleased if your reverence and the brothers there would pray for her. Mother Maria del Carmen greets your reverence respectfully. I also greet the brothers. I wanted to write to your reverence with my own hand, and I beg your blessing, remaining with all humility and respect, your daughter and servant in Christ, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, 